My name is Jeff Decker. I work for GSI. Uh, I travel around the um, United States training um, firefighters and farmers on first thing is is prevention, not to put yourself in a bad situation where um, you may be injured or killed. Uh, the second thing is is we train firefighters and rescuers uh, how to rescue people out of grain bins and grain silos. Unfortunately, uh, we have more and more people getting trapped in grain bins every year. The numbers keep going up. More people are storing grain. Grain bins are getting bigger, as you guys probably well know. One thing to remember about agriculture is it is one of the most dangerous occupations out there. It usually ranks with number two, right behind mining as the most dangerous. Uh, agriculture is very unforgiving. A lot of times you don't get second chances. Uh, there's more accidents and more deaths in agriculture in the age range of seven to 15 year olds than any other age. Um, so, you know, you gotta be very careful. Uh, a lot of times you may not get a second chance. People don't realize how fast people sink in grain a lot of times. A person that weighs 165 pounds, standing in a grain bin and that uh, 10 inch auger turns on, you've got 15 seconds until you're waist deep in the grain. Once that grain gets above your waist, you're done and you're not getting out until somebody comes and gets you. It takes about 325 pounds of pressure to get a person out of grain buried waist deep. You will literally pull a person in half before you pull them out. We've had documented cases where people have had bad injuries and been killed when they tried to use a winch or a crane or something to try to physically yank them out of the grain. So we have to remove the grain from the victim, not the victim from the grain. So what you're going to see here today is, is as we sink her into the grain, we're going to bury her around waist or a little over waist deep. Then we're going to bring up what we call a coffer dam. As long as I got part of the victim exposed above the grain, I can use a coffer dam. Uh, it can be built like this one down here. There's all different, there's other variations. Some fire departments will use um, plywood and things. But what we got to do is we got to limit the amount of grain that can run back in around our victim. And then we've got to remove, it limits also the amount of grain we've got to take around the victim out. If the victim is totally submerged under the grain, you're going to get into where you're going to have to cut the grain bin to draw the grain away until you find them. Once they're found, then you can go to this method or continue with, with the grain out the side. So, unfortunately, the majority of the people that go under completely under, usually it does end in a recovery. We do have, we have had a few people survive going completely under the surface, but not very many. So, we're going to go ahead and start. Um, we'll get her drawn down. You're going to see how fast she sinks. In this case, they're going to open that gate. It's a 16-inch diameter gate. We will bury her probably up to about waist to chest deep in roughly four to five seconds. So if you guys want to count when I say go, um, make sure we got her released here. All right. Go ahead and open the gate. Good. Uh, if I open that gate up in the bottom wide open, uh, she would have been down in, under the grain probably in a matter of three to five seconds. So it, it, it happens real fast. Uh, there's nothing you can really do to slow yourself down from going down. I've had people say, well, I'll grab my cell phone or I'll, you know, I'll do something, I'll lay flat. It, you don't, number one, you don't have time for a radio or a cell phone, as you just saw. And number two is if you laid out flat, it's just going to fold you up and take you right down as well. So uh, in this case, we're not up, to, up um, above her chest really, so she's not going to have much trouble breathing. Uh, if it was a little deeper, we could put a piece of the coffer dam in front of her and start removing some of the grain to make sure she can breathe. Grain acts like a boa constrictor snake. A boa constrictor snake wraps around your chest and every time you breathe out it squeezes a little tighter and you can't breathe in as much. It will slowly suffocate you. The grain will do the same thing. We've had people that have been buried up to their neck deep where their head's still completely above the grain actually um, die from suffocation because the grain continually packs tighter and tighter around them. So every time I take a step in here, uh, she would feel that. I won't because it's going to avalanche more grain around her. Um, one thing, too, is, as you can see, she's at the bottom of the funnel. This is a small simulator bin. If you're in a larger bin, of course, the grain's a lot higher out on the walls. If the rescuers go in and they walk around in here, more grain's going to avalanche down around the victim. So she's not in a good position. Um, we don't want to be walking around because we're going to slide more grain down eventually. And if I made about two circles in this thing, the grain would be up to about her neck. So. Good. So you can see how fast you go down with that grain. I mean, once you get caught in the flow of that, it's none. I mean, you're going with it and there's nothing you can do. As I walk around in here, 
you see how the grain flows right in around him? That's packing tight. And it packs tight as you walk. So usually the first thing they say is, is don't walk so close or don't walk walk around much. So, but you can definitely feel the pressure. Yes. Yeah, All right, let me get back up here a little bit. Even out here, he can feel the pressure. He says so. We're gonna start putting the, the coffer dam around her one piece at a time here. Put one in front of her. Try not to hit her. Pull that one back out and make sure your, your angle's completely engaged here. Once we get the four pieces of tube um, together, we'll go ahead and couple the tube together. All right, we got her. We got the tube around her. As you're putting the tube around the tube, one of the keys is is take a few seconds, make sure it's round, make sure it's sealed up. If you get it tapered at the bottom and you don't realize it, you either crack some grain leaks in. Then I've got to take time, and I've either got to get some boards or I got to reset. Sometimes we'll just use a boot, use your boot to actually stick your foot there to block it. Uh, I've got a homemade tube I use sometimes too. It's not near as fancy, it doesn't lock together, it's just back to back angles I butt together. I've got to take a lot more time to make sure I got a nice round circle that's going straight down in when I shove it down in so that I don't get the grain leaks in and stuff because the grain will run in as fast as you can back it out. Now what I've done is i bought myself some time now. Um, we've got the tube around the victim. She's got a harness on. Uh, she can't go anywhere. All I've got to do is get the grain that remains around the victim from inside the coffer dam to outside to where we're at. If the victim was totally under the grain, we'd have to cut holes in the bin so we could get down to the victim. As long as I got part of my victim exposed, I can use a coffer dam style system and um, be able to rescue them out. In this case, we're going to use a shop vac to remove the grain from in around her. Typically, we're going to have to remove about two to three shop vac fulls in order to get her out. We're going to have to get the grain level from her waist or chest down to probably about knee high uh, before we can get her out. So, <clears throat> if you don't have a shop vac or power or something, as long as I got the grain cleared away from her chest so she can breathe okay. I could use a coffee can, a coffee mug, literally a hard hat, anything. You could dip the grain out. It's going to take a little longer, but we could dip the grain out and just and remove it from around her. So, <clears throat> get it. Yep. Ready? Yep. I think you can get out now if I give you a little assistance on the rope. There you can you can see how she um, as she's working her way up now she, she kind of pulled one leg up and then one, another leg and another leg and she slowly worked her way up um, and she's out. How was it? Ta -da. Ta -da. How about a round of a hand for Taylor? You want to climb out or you want to wait till we move the tube? I can move the tube real quick. Okay. There you go. The grain she's standing on inside the tube is at least a couple of feet below what we're standing on out here. So what we'll do is we'll pull the tube back slowly, piece at a time, and that'll allow the grain to run in, and she'll walk, and 
And as long as she keeps her feet moving and walking, she will actually slowly get taller in there working on the grain. If you'll watch my feet, if I pull this piece of tube up, you see I sink down about three or four inches. If I, if I pull that up sooner, I'll sink further. So you just gotta be real careful. I do stress, if you guys are in, especially in rural communities and stuff, talk to your local fire chief, see if he has any clue about grain bin rescue. They may have never thought about it, never trained for it or anything. Invite them out to your sites if you can, let them take a walk around, let them look. Sometimes they'll even come out and want to train there a little bit. Um, once you call the fire department to a rescue situation, they're in charge. It's a good idea to know how they're going to react. Some fire departments, Get these people, get them over there in that building and get them out of my way. I'm taking care of it from here out. It doesn't matter if you guys know more than he does on this stuff after you've been here today even. Once they're there, they're in charge. So if he knows that you've had, you may have employees that have had classes in it, they may know more than he does. If you can work with them up front, this isn't the time you got to find out what you're really dealing with. Work with them up front. Get them out there, talk to them, let them look around, and um, encourage them to get training and work with you guys so that they know what they're dealing with. I've had some fire departments go, I had no idea that bin was 100 feet tall and I got nothing to reach it. Didn't even think about it. Drive by it every day, but they don't think about it. So, uh, you know, they don't understand that sometimes there's elaborate tunnel systems under elevators they got to deal with too. So, so uh, it's just a good idea to get work with them up front ahead of time. And hopefully you never have this situation, but if you do, you want to be prepared.